So is this the best shower on the market right now? As much as I complain about it, yes. For me, this is the shower I'm going to continue to use. It's all about the low water for me and it's all about having a nice hot shower that I can get going quickly. But I would like to see some of the little things fixed. So I'm going to be tough on the shower guys in this video, but it's not because I dislike the geyser shower. It's honestly as good as it gets for our family in terms of a shower out here. But I think that's what drives me nuts. It's like almost a perfect shower, but then there's two or three things about it that just drive me crazy. So just know that as you know where my heart's at in this video. I get frustrated with it, but I'd still buy it today and I'd still continue to use it, but it's far from perfect, at least in my opinion. Now they offer two versions of this geyser shower. One is designed for people that are just using a backpacking stove or another way to heat your water source. And the other can do both 12 volt and heat with a stove. This one only can use a stove, but I'm gonna pretend it has the other features. So if you were to heat this water with your 12 volt source, you would turn on that 12 volt source and you would get a green light here on the power on. Then you would just flip the switch that says heat and it would take that water that we just pulled from the river and heat that up without you having to use an external source. So in what scenario would you want to use this 12 volt version? Well, when I contacted Geyser, they suggested it would be for people that don't already own a stove. So people just getting into camping, they can just plug it in and heat up the water. But after using this for a bit, I find it's kind of the easier route. Yes, it takes a lot longer to heat it up with electricity versus using your fuel on the stove to get up to boiling. It says in here that it takes 15 to 40 minutes to heat up that water temperature off the 12 volt, just based on the temperature of the water that you have coming into it. But it's a lot more accurate in that I take the river water, put it in here, plug it in and walk away. Then it's going to get it up to the right temp, just right for the shower and then I can take it. Where with the other method I'll show you in a bit, it has to be exact. My boiling water to cool water ratio has to be right on because if it's too hot, I then have to sit here for 20 minutes waiting for it to cool down because there is a protective mechanism in here that makes it so you can't scald yourself and the shower won't work. I want to have control of the heat of my shower. I don't want it to have that control. And I say I don't want it to have control over my water temp. It heats the water up to 95 degrees. And to me, that's just not quite hot enough, but it won't allow it to go over. So for those of you who own a hot tub, you know 95 is pretty cold. Um, you know, a lot of hot tubs are set between that 102, 105 degree level. So at 95 on a cold day, it kind of feels hot at first, but as you start taking the shower, I find I just want more heat. So it's time to trade out the electricity for the gas. So here's where I get frustrated right off the bat. In their manual, they have a ratio for boiling water to cold water to set the temp where you want it. So if you have 50 degree cold water, you would add 1.5 liters of boiling. If you have hotter cold water at 75 degrees, you would add 0.5 liters of boiling water. I think when I'm playing with the temperature of the water, the issue I'm having out here with consistency is me, but a bit of it's outside of my hands. So based on the elevation I'm at, my boiling temps are different, right? And then based on the water sources I'm pulling from. So if it's my blue jug that's been sitting in the sun all day versus this cold stream right here that has trout in it, I mean, that's two totally different ratios of hot to cold. And it's really tough for me to get it to the highest point of water that I'm trying to reach without setting off that sensor. Does that make sense? Are you guys getting me? And 
And the thing that's bothered me is if I do get it too hot, it's not as simple as just taking out half the water and adding some cold water to it. It seems like, I don't know what happens. The reset might have a timer in it or something that it's just showing too hot all the time. And then by the time the light does go on and it's good to shower, it's not as hot as I want it. So I found out from the manual why it's taking so long for it to get under 95 degrees for the pump to work again. And the manual says it has to drop to 87 degrees. And so that's why when the pump goes back on, I'm getting this kind of lukewarm shower. And why isn't it 95? Why can't it turn back on at 95? <laughs> Drives me a little nuts. So I also find in the manual, there's a threshold. Like it doesn't have to be exactly on 95. It looks like it can be from 95 to 101 before it shuts off. And so when I see that, that makes me want to tinker with it to see how hot I can get it. So some nights I'm tinkering and it does great and we get a great hot shower. Other nights I go a little over the threshold and now I have to wait 10, 15 minutes when all my clothes are off. I'm out here in the cold waiting for this to reset itself. Can you tell I'm a little frustrated? This should, ju this should be simple. And you guys know me, I don't get frustrated very often. And I think it's because I love the concept of the geyser shower. I'm a big proponent of hauling very little water out here. I like a hot shower before going to bed and one that's instant and simple. I mean, this has everything. I, I, I guess I shouldn't say instant, but it doesn't take a whole lot of time to set it up, to get that water heated, to get the shower going, and then the kids off to bed. But I have a few more issues coming up with the shower that I need to share with you as well. Oh, that's hot. Don't squeeze. And then if you squeeze, So even here in their manual, it says water temperatures over 131 degrees, so 50 degrees Celsius, can cause scalding. So they even know that. I wish they would allow it to go into the lower 100s, um, but this is made right here in Colorado, and I think that's why, you know, Americans and their Sioux happy culture, you know, if this was coming out of China like other products, I think it'd be able to go a lot higher. So I get it, they're protecting themselves, I'd do the same thing, but I sure wish I could bypass that a little bit. And I need to talk about that 95 degrees. 95 is actually a really great temperature to do the sponge bath at. It's perfect for my kids, even for May and me most of the time. I think why I want a higher threshold is there's some nights where I've just been out and I'm sopping wet and I am cold to the bone. And so I'm looking for a soak. I'm looking for very hot water to kind of bring my core or at least the sensation of a warmer core before I go to bed. But really 95, I'm nitpicking here. It is a great temperature. It does more than just give you a lukewarm shower. It's a hot shower. Another thing to note on this, I only know two other people who've owned this and they've both had little issues. So when I got mine the first time, my first sponge, 
uh, it has plastic parts where it connects. That broke when I put it in. It's still held, but I couldn't get it to go in the lock position. Not a big deal. But the other two people I knew, they actually had components on here that broke on this because of the plastic. But they contacted Geyser. Geyser had it out to them next day. So they, they worked really quickly on it. But I hope that's something Geyser continues to work on. Um, just the quality of these products. Just taking feedback from people like us and making this um, the perfect shower that I need it to be and you probably need it to be. You're going to want to check out this Julka hot water shower video, also a dishwashing station, and then our budget shower video. As usual, stay safe out there and we'll see you in the next episode.